All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to welcome from up the coast in Santa Barbara, Jennifer Love. How are you doing, Jennifer? <laughs> doing well, thanks. Yeah, and Jennifer is a wealth philosopher, money therapist, and the founding CEO of the Living Wealthy Institute. And you work with we're leaders um, on, on, and you work as a national speaker. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is the fascinating subject of money therapy, right? Uh, so let's get straight into it, yeah. Jennifer. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. very familiar with re retail therapy. My wife is a great exponent <laughs> of that. <laughs> but tell us, tell us what, tell us what uh, money therapy is. Yeah, well, let me take you into a, a couple of insights that I have, and that yeah. will kind of lead lead us there. Um, you know, I I see that and believe that we live in a world where people of influence and money, leaders, business owners, government officials, financial institutions, that in large part they're all being run by those who are emotionally destitute. I know that's a big statement um, because they're burnt out, they're unfulfilled, they're unsatisfied, they're disconnected, they're lonely, they're filled with anger, shame, fear, anxiety, the list goes on. And then financial decisions and really all kinds of decisions are being made from their emotional pain and unmet needs. And this is what I call emotional poverty. And financial decisions, um, are greatly impacting the lives. These particular financial decisions from these particular leaders are greatly impacting the lives of the masses and the condition of the mm -hmm. planet. And you know, if we have profiteering um, running the land, so will war, dissolution, and destruction. But if we have financial integrity and healthy stewardship running the land, then so will peace and goodwill and restoration. And so our vision um, at Live Well and is to end emotional poverty. And so that's what money therapy is really doing. It's it's right. taking a, this leader inside of the show, the stories, the ways in which their decisions and their life is being run by these unmet and unprocessed um, emotionality and needs. And what we know through science is that more than 90% of our uh, financial decisions are being made based on our emotions. So we sure. want to do something about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so let's, let's talk about how do you, how do you, I mean, because I, I agree with you, I mean, the world, and it's a very complex world we live in today with all these distractions and comparisons and everything. And it's very, it, there's a lot of tools out there that can uh, make you feel very inadequate about yourself if you let them. Um, but how do you how do you help somebody recognize or how does somebody recognize that they're emotionally destitute or well, at least on the poverty line? Yeah, I think there's a there's symptoms like, um, you know, you're maybe you're drinking too much um, in your life. I know that, you know, part of how that expressed for me was workaholism. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't I wasn't in my 20s. I wasn't sleeping two nights a week and drinking basically two coffee like two pots of coffee a day just so i could keep going um mm. this this can come out in form of um eating disorders right this right. comes out in forms of some kind of addiction in our life this comes out in like <laughs> i was reflecting this morning actually on this john before coming in i was like you know i think there's a really interesting relationship between how we as people often identify as being over givers. I'm sure, John, you've got someone in your life, if not someone in your house, you know, that feels like an over giver. Um, and mm -hmm. so what does that translate into? That translates into some kind of debt in our life, whether that's financial debt or whether that's emotional debt. And then we begin to internalize these things and we're doing all kinds of ugly things like punishing ourselves or punishing other people in our life. And so mm -hmm. we're unhappy, we're unfulfilled, we're 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 living on anxiety that seems to run our life maybe it's even hard to you know leave your home i had a client several years ago um 
she's doing amazing now, but she, she could barely leave uh, her home. And she mm. had, she was about a year and a half into running her business. Um, and John, you know, if you can barely leave your home, that doesn't really go so well for sales. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're like a massive hiding. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so, and so the amount of shame and and anger in her was keeping her hiding, um, in her home. Well, we right. had to work. We had to work through all of that, right? Now she's gone on. Not only did she physically grow four inches because that's how much the shame was weighing her down, wow. um, but she, but she's now you know thriving. She brought on a business partner, and they're 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 about to hit Inc's fastest growing company list next wow. year. Um, but this is what's possible when we process and we go through a process like money therapy to help us process these things in our life so that our finances are where we want them to be. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimately. I think, yeah, I think one of the, one of the issues, and I think this is, um, and I think maybe if, if there was a silver lining from the pandemic, maybe was, I find that a lot of people don't spend any time with themselves. They don't spend any time in their own head or whatever, because they're totally constantly like have distractions around them. And to, you know, to develop self-awareness, to even become aware of how unhappy or miserable that you may be, it requires you to take, a moment at least to reflect um or that's like that's, an, that's like why... the, that's like the understatement of the year yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> and like let's please underline that bold it italicize it bold it you know like all caps exclamation point exclamation <laughs> exclamation like that is how important what you just said is yes we have to take the power pauses in our life and listen to ourselves to take that time to reflect to to understand what our body is even communicating like what mm -hmm. are the sensations that i'm experiencing in my body what is my body saying to me and then that's giving me information and giving me clues on oh wait a minute i've got some emotions about around something oh wait a minute what are the thoughts what's the what are the stories that i'm running Oh, wait a minute. What are the needs that I have underneath all of that? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I can go make a request either of myself or of someone else because now I have an in on what's actually going on for me because I've taken some time to pause mm -hmm. and listen. That's yeah. how important that is. And and the thing is, uh, I mean, and this is why people like you are so are so important is like sometimes it's just really hard to do this on your own. And, you know, and it's not something, yeah, you, you turn to a family member or a friend. But the fact is, at the end of the day, the, having somebody who's completely independent and just invested in you and your success is is sometimes like that's what a lot of people need because it is it is a difficult place to know where to start if you're suddenly like feeling like that you're overwhelmed that everything is negative that that you're just in this kind of whirlwind it's very hard to just break out of it on your own that's why having having an external person is, is so critical you know we just can't see what we can't see in ourselves, mm -hmm. right? That's why that's why they're called blind spots. Um, and and so you know, we on um, part of my team, uh, one of the persons called RG and the other person's called Bargy, and we actually have mm -hmm. them in in there, you know, on the team like RG and Bargy. You need that RG Bargy, you know, someone kind of like to do that with you to help you be able to like shake loose some of the ways in which you know that drain is just really clogged up with a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you can access those those layers yeah and then i mean then obviously like even your attitude to money whether it's you know you personally or even at work or business or whatever i mean a lot of that is connected to your attitude to money that you have grown up with that you have internalized over the years so how how much do um you know, factors from the past, the unresolved issues or things that we've never really just confronted or thought about or decided to say, okay, actually, that's no longer true. How much do they hold us back? 90%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 90%. Yeah. 90% of us is being controlled by even some would claim 95%. Um, 
But 99% of us is being controlled by our unprocessed emotions, thoughts, and that translate into our behaviors that become the reality that we've created in our life that we manifest more of because we're trying to heal from it, but we're not because we're in an addictive cycle that we can't seem to end because we don't take enough time to pause and actually do this work. (laughs) (laughs) And and all delivered without even taking a breath. Perfect. Um, so, so what are what are some of the first steps that somebody can take to start to address yeah. this if they suddenly realize that like my way is not working anymore? Yeah, well, you know, I've got a quiz over on our site it's called the Living Wealthy Quiz, um, and that's I think a really a really fun way to begin to get an in on yourself around a couple key areas. And they can be one of the, my favorite ways it's like through self-examination, like start Mm -hmm. asking yourself some questions, simple questions, even sometimes John, it's the simplest things in life that are the hardest to do, right? Like Mm -hmm. sitting and taking an inventory of all of the ways in which in your life, you're making yourself not matter. Literally ask yourself that Mm -hmm. question. How am I making myself not matter in my life? And, and then stop, look, and listen, and then write, write it down. Start just taking inventory. That's one way. Another way is to yeah, begin to witness your inner critic and keep a log, keep, mm-hmm. a daily, keep a daily log of what that inner critic, right? That I call it the three-headed drama llama. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the victim, the hero, and the bully. Where is it showing up? And, like, how is it communicating to you? What is What are the exact words? If you start to write that down, and I have a whole process for how we then, like, compost that and tame that inner critic. Um, but, like, first you got to just capture it and see what it's even saying. Those are some of the first steps of things that you can begin to do for yourself um, to, to begin to notice and witness what's going on for you. Mm-hmm. And and uh, I mean, even to recognize that, because I mean, I think that's even hard for people sometimes to even, you know, recognize the, those areas. And so obviously, if you start to pay attention to it and you start to write it down or record it, you're, it's going to become more obvious to you. And I think probably the other part of that, too, is is you've got to cut out some of the distractions, you know, in your in your life and, and not. I mean, because let's face it, what do we do often uh, if something goes wrong, uh, you know, we get a bit upset and we just grab our phone and then we'll go on and we'll get a dopamine hit from some stupid thing on Instagram. What's whatever. it telling me? Where's <laughs> exactly. where's my sense of value? It's not here. Exactly. It, it's yes. it's here. <laughs> yeah. So how do you how do you help people just, you know, to start to do that? Like put aside those things and focus. Lots and lots of meditation. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, lots and lots of um you know, for me it's that it comes back to that morning, um, that morning ritual. Like and you know, here's a really good test for anyone who's listening to this. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing that you say to yourself? Mm. And from that, and from from that place, what's what's the first thing? You know, what are you taking yourself in to do? You know, are you are you waking up and going, oh shit, like I hate my life, or I'm such I'm such an idiot for forgetting to do this, or I have to do this thing, or I'm somehow I'm underneath that I'm I, there's that I'm not good enough, or I'm not doing this fast enough, or right. I'm not further along yet. Right story. Are those the things that you're waking up to? Because that's a real good indicator that the first thing that you need to do when you get up in the morning is to calm and love on that wounded inner part of you, right? That mm-hmm. little that little storyteller i call it inside of you that needs a lot of attention and and creates sacred time to sit down and listen and comfort it in mm-hmm. the morning you know through meditation through breathing through journaling through whatever practice works for you but like literally creating that space john i can hear this is important for you or at least the journey it's mm-hmm. a part of the journey that you're on because you keep bringing it up and you're spot on um for what i see really helps to get people access into themselves yeah, because, you know, I often say to people, because, I mean, if you start your day, right, I mean, there's often people that, they, you know, they don't even say good morning to the person who may be lying beside them. They grab their phone first, right? And 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 sometimes I like, grab their phone first and then, you know, 
maybe they're on Instagram or maybe they're on a news site or whatever. And, and news today is designed to provoke reactions. It's not designed to inform, as we know. Instagram, you know, or, or those other social media comparison culture. So if you're not careful, you can start your day with so many negative inputs, right? You're comparing yourself to people just saying, oh, as you said, oh, look at them. They're doing so well and I'm doing so badly, even though it's, you know, how can you tell from one picture? Or the news, like, oh, I'm all angry now about this. So I think to your point, exactly. I think I think the, the inputs exactly. you start your day with are incredibly important. That's exactly right. Start with making yourself matter. Like have an I matter practice. Make your morning about you and you giving yourself the nourishment that you need. And you know, one of the questions I like to ask myself is how can I love myself until I'm full? And I do that in the first hour, you know, four hours of my morning. So I'm up at, you know, four thirty, five o'clock. And then by nine thirty, ten o'clock, you know, I, I've had a full morning just for myself. And I'm feeling mm -hmm. pretty good to go out into the world and give to other then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and just and what are some other ways people can recognize that they are making themselves not matter or that you know, what are some of the ways you can recognize that in your daily as you go about your day? Yeah. Well, huh. You know, how are you how are you um what are you doing for lunch? <laughs> are you right. eating? you know, at your desk and just eating through lunch? Are you even eating lunch? Or are you just like constantly snacking throughout the day? You know, how are you taking care of yourself? How are you, you know, exercising? Um, how are the relationships in your life? What's the quality of the relationships in your life? Are you able to really open up to other people? Do you, what's the, what's the depth of intimacy that you're experiencing? Do you have a sense of belonging or do you feel lonely? You know, is there like a loneliness? What about the level of anxiety? Um, that you're having on a daily level, whether it's about money or anything else, right? And what's running your decisions? Is it fear or is it trust, mm. right? So those are some of the kinds of things that you can begin to examine, you know, how you might be being affected by some of these things. Yeah, no, no, those are those are those are great pointers. And then once you once you recognize that and and you and you start your journey, I always feel like you know people people want to do better. They want to improve. You know, a lot of people do, and they start off on something, but they find it hard to sustain. Right. I mean, they start off with enthusiasm. How do you help people like when they get into this yeah. is sustain it and not kind of drop back into old habits? Yeah. It's, it's progress over perfection always. Mm -hmm. Right. In the world of finance, if we got a 1% improvement every day, that's a 30% return in 30 days. That's 365 Mm -hmm. percent return mm -hmm. in a year in the world of finance like this is mind-blowing right mm -hmm. we're like thrilled if we're able to get this kind of return so take it and look at it as like one percent improvement every day what what's the next one thing that i can do and how can i like create a a um step into a discipline because i'll tell you living wealthy is a decision it is a daily devotional practice of manifestation. You are mm -hmm. creating your life every single day by all the choices that you make. What are you choosing to create every day? And so when you think about what you're creating every day, it's like, okay, 1%, I'm moving towards what I really want. What I'm saying that I really want, you've got to, you've got to like, just make that little bit of progress rather than the perfection the perfection actually stops us it's a saboteur yes yeah, it yeah. right and so it, it has a way of like creating um either procrastination um mm -hmm. there's the whole i'm a failure so therefore you know what's the point um so i'm just gonna not do it you know not do this mm -hmm. right i'm not even gonna try and carol dweck has that great book um, mindset you know the fixed mindset versus the growth mm -hmm. mindset you know are you allowing yourself to have a feel forward container in your life um and so that 1% progress over perfection is really the mindset and framework to operate um, and look through. Yeah, no, that's the, that's fantastic. No, I, 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 I totally agree with that. And it's amazing um, how what are perceived as small little adjustments or little improvements, what an outsize impact they can have, uh, you know, when you start down that road. Exactly. And before you know it, in 30 days, you're so much further down the road and you can stop and like turn around and look and be like, wow, 
And I actually think that's a really important practice, acknowledgement, self-acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. So often we seek acknowledgement and validation outside of ourselves. But if we take the time to take a look and look back at like our progress, we recognize, oh, wait a minute, I'm not where I was 30 days ago. Wow, look at all that progress. And that progress begets more progress, right? This is the law of physics mm -hmm. in motion, right? Yeah. Motion creates more motion. And, and so progress and the acknowledgement of it it's an honoring of ourself and therefore mm -hmm. it begets more. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, what a perfect way to end. Cause I often say to people is, especially when people are doubting themselves or whatever it is, and I say, just take a quick look back on, on where you've come from, like and then go all the way back and think of all the things that you have overcome or the obstacles and the, to be where you are today and realize how much more resilient and, uh, you basically how much how much more resilience you have than you probably give yourself credit for exactly exactly yeah. beautifully said well fontanifer's information is going to be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do oh well, i'm jennifer love and you know really i'm a money therapist but my heart is just in helping people live wealthy every single day so they end the emotional poverty in their life and you can find me at jenniferlove.com yeah, and as I said, all of the links will be uh, below, and uh, I encourage you to go check out. Yeah, just um, absolutely anything, anything like this that you can do to help yourself to work with an expert like this. But but to take just to be conscious about your life and how your life is unfolding, and be a be the architect rather than the passive player in it. Hmm. All right. Well, listen. Thanks very much, Jennifer. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks, John.